humans. Strange upright primates with unusually large brains. A group that has taken over and dominated the world like no other. In modern times, only a single species of human still walks the earth, Homo sapiens. But we are only a sliver of the species that are considered human. We are at the end of a long line of other people. You may be surprised to learn that our ancestors were also considered human, but they are much more like us than we previously thought. Some of them wore clothes, had language, culture, and families. Just like you and I, they loved, they warred, and thought about abstract concepts. By all sense of the word, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and other relatives were human. But what does it even mean to be human? Many attribute culture, shared customs, as making someone human. But this definition is hardly scientific. Most consider, at very least, every species in the genus Homo to be considered human. This means everything including Homo habilis and everything after it to be human. That would mean there are about 12 species of human currently known. Homo habilis itself has been controversial in that many believed and some still believe that it should be assigned to the genus Australopithecus. I am just happy there is at least a species that fits between these two groups so people can stop talking about a missing link. Some people consider everything from our last common ancestor with chimpanzees to be considered human. That would mean everything in the subtribe Hominina. This would mean much more archaic apes like Australopithecines, Ardipithecus, and species such as Paranthropus were humans. This definition makes sense because it encompasses the very human-like Australopithecines that we are descendants of. In any means of the definition, the transition from hominin ape to human was gradual. What I mean is that since evolution is a gradual process, there is a spectrum of human, human-like, and more ape-like ancestors. The term human is just really not scientific in nature to begin with. I believe it is just anthropomorphizing our ancestors from a modern human lens. This is why we should use proper taxonomic nomenclature. Hominidae is a family consisting of all modern and extinct great apes. That is, modern humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, plus all of their immediate ancestors. Hominine is a subfamily of Hominidae that consists of two tribes, the tribe Hominini and Gorillin. Basically, the two groups after the ancestors of chimpanzees and humans split from gorillas. Hominini is a tribe consisting of modern humans, chimpanzees, bonobos, and all the relatives after gorillas and chimps split over 8 million years ago. Within Hominine are the genuses Pan, Australopithecus, and Homo. And the subtribe Hominina is comprised of all the ancestors of humans closer related to us than to chimpanzees. So the genuses of Australopithecus and Homo would fall under that subtribe. That just shows you how similar we are to chimpanzees and bonobos, though. After all, they are our closest relatives, but are they human? Most would say no. It is really a spectrum from ape-like human to human. But in the eyes of taxonomy, the word doesn't really have any meaning. So now let's ask, how many species of human were there? Well, it's not really that simple. Before we can even get into the question, we must answer what is a species? The concept of a species used to be very simple. If two individuals could produce fertile offspring, they are from the same species. In recent years, this definition just doesn't cut it. Critics of the interbreeding definition point out that not all life reproduces sexually. Some plants and bacteria can reproduce asexually. Others have argued that we should define a species by grouping together organisms with similar anatomical features, but that method has weaknesses as well. There can be significant morphological variation between the sexes and even individuals of the same species in different parts of the world, making it a very subjective way of classifying life. For example, Homo sapiens are all one species, yet we have great diversity, at least in phenotypic traits. Look at dogs, they are all one species. You could not necessarily tell this from just bones. When we look at DNA, we see that dogs are all one species and they can all produce viable offspring. 
Some biologists prefer to use DNA to draw the lines between species, and with advancing technology they can do so with increasing precision. But we don't have the DNA of every extinct human. For example, the genome of Homo erectus has never been sequenced. It gets even more confusing knowing that about 2% of the average European's DNA comes from Neanderthals, and as much as 6% of the DNA from some Melanesians comes from Denisovans. Since we can easily interbreed with Denisovans and Neanderthals, the question of are we even a separate species comes into question. Some people will say that Neanderthals are the same species as us, but we are anatomically and genetically much different from them. After taking all this into account, some experts have argued that the concept of a species doesn't actually exist. But others say that while a cast iron definition of species is almost impossible to achieve, it's still worth the effort so that we can talk about evolution in a meaningful way. John Stewart, an evolutionary paleontologist at Bournemouth University, said, It's all about the definition of a species and the degree to which you accept variation within a species. Species seems to be quite a subjective term that could depend on a variety of things for each species in question. As many of you know, evolution is not a straight linear model. The braided stream model is good and other models also exist. Species gradually form, mutate, hybridize, and others go extinct. Human evolution is a very complex topic that involves the breeding of many different species. There are about 12 species currently recognized, but many of these species may be subspecies or belong to another species entirely. New species of human are being discovered all the time. Just in 2019, Homo luzanensis was discovered. It was also recently discovered that there may have been multiple species of Denisovan. There is so much to learn in the field of paleoanthropology. I am starting a new series called Ancient Man to talk about our extinct relatives. It will be just like ancient animals, but of course with humans. I plan to cover every human species and I will have to update the series with new discoveries. The first episode of this series will be done on Denisovans. So make sure to stay tuned next week when this video will come out. Until then, feel free to check out the other videos I have made on Ancient Man. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Northo 2. See ya.